Hi, my name is Courtney Bowen, and this is my major presentation on GPS and GIS. What is GPS? GPS stands for Global Positioning System. GPS allows users access to positioning, navigation, and timing services. What is GIS? GIS stands for Geographic Information System, and it's a computer system that captures, stores, and displays information about Earth's surface. Development of GPS and GIS. The origins of GPS and GIS go way back, but in the 1960s, the Defense Department decided that they wanted to combine the best technologies into one. Um, some of the systems that they combined included Navy's Transit and Timation System, Air Force's 621B, and the Army's SECOR. Today, GPS has three main segments. Um, those segments are space, control, and user segments. And GPS can be found in a myriad of devices, such as cell phones, bulldozers, shipping containers, and ATMs. How GPS works. Basically, there are 24 satellites um, that circle the Earth twice a day, and each of those follow one of six orbits. These satellites broadcast radio signals that include location status and time, and then GPS devices pick up on those signals and they track arrival times to, to calculate a distance from the satellite. Once a GPS has a, calculated the distance from at least four satellites, it can use geometry to give a 3D view. How GIS works. GIS um, is basically the computer system and then data is entered into GIS. It can be digital or computerized data. Um, examples of data that are entered into GIS are satellite data showing land use and location, data about vegetation, location of streams and types of soil, and then data about people such as population level, income level, and educational level. Um, GIS helps us understand relationships and trends. How GIS works, this is a graphic of um, kind of an example of GIS. These are the different data layers. Um, there's street data, buildings data, vegetation data, and then all of those come together to become integrated data. GIS and GPS technology working together. One great example of this is Google Maps. Um, and it's something I use every day and I know it's used very often. Um, it's an interactive map and it allows you to track to add traffic information or view satellite images. Uses for GPS and GIS. Um, there are so many things that use GPS and GIS now, but I just wanted to cover some of the areas that they're used in. So for instance, agriculture, aviation, environment, marine, public safety and disaster relief, rail, recreation, roads and highways, space, surveying and mapping and timing. Um, one of my favorite ways, um, which is probably falls under recreation, um, to use GPS would be the Nike apps that you can download that will track your runs. Um, so if you like to run or anything, they'll track them and you can go back and see where you've run and everything else that overlays it on a map. It's one of my favorite ways to use GPS. Alright, classroom uses, which is the most important part. So um, I've listed some project examples kind of by subject area. Um, one of the first examples is in math. Um, there's actually in Common Core, one of the standards is for sixth grade in math is understand the concept of a ratio and use ratio language to describe a ratio relationship between two quantities. Um, to make this, to make a fun activity, you could use GPS and GIS to explore proportions of men versus women in a certain city or in um, the age range or the, the educational level or income level. You could use any of those things to meet the standard or to meet part of the standard. Um, social studies, you could take a virtual field trip to the Great Wall of China or any other landmark that you'd like to show your students. In science, you could explore geological features in the community. 
And in English, you could map the locations of characters in a story, or you could map the, map the plots and kind of follow them along. Um, and this would fall under integrating visual information like charts, graphs, photographs, videos, or maps with other information in print and digital text um, from Common Core in Literacy 6th to 8th grade. Some very important applications for use that are used very often and can be very useful in the classroom are geocaching and Google Earth. Geocaching is modern day treasure hunting. Um, it's basically you can set up geocaches around the school um, and use it. And so we're just going to look at the website for geocaching. This is the geocaching website. This is actually geocaching and education. Um, it's for educators. You can create an account if you'd like. It's going to give you um, introduction to geocaching, um, a guide to the game, and it gives you a quick summary in two minutes, which you can see. It's got starter kits and everything. Um, one of my favorite things about this website, though, is creating a geocaching event. So if you go to Youth and Young Adults, it actually gives you a PDF file that you can download or print that's um, going to it's the geocaching adventure kit and it's going to tell you how you can use geocaching. So it tells you a little bit about geocaching. I'll zoom in for you guys. It tells you a little bit about geocaching and geocaching.com. The resources that are available. And then it gives you options for using geocaching. The first one is finding existing geocaches. Um, with that, it gives you the tools that you can use and step-by-step -step instructions. And then the sec second option is that you can create temporary geocaches. Um, so you could do this around your playground or anything else around the school. Um, so it, again, gives you the list of tools and step-by-step -step instructions. Alright, Google Earth is another great application. Um, it's a visual aid for classroom projects and discussion and it allows you to pinpoint specific locations. So we'll pull up the Google Earth website. Um, this is Google Earth for educators. Here you can find some great resources for your classroom as well. Um, so classroom resources are here. Tutorials and tips. You can talk to other educators and you can look at grants and you can look at student work and what educators are saying so it's a great resource to take their students on field trips around the world. Social studies can make the world seem large and unmanageable without the proper tools. This program will replace static black and white maps with a dynamic and interactive education experience. Time would be saved by letting students search for what they are looking for without having to scan listless maps providing a more efficient education. the program to find landmarks and identify states. History students can find, see pictures of, and identify monuments like the ancient pyramids of Egypt, the Colosseum of Rome, and the Taj Mahal of India. Using the historical imagery tool, students can see what regions looked like in the past. Geography students will learn to recognize borders, mountain ranges, and bodies of water. Current events will seem less foreign as students can fly around the globe to places they hear about in the news. Google Earth will enhance education today.
help students understand social studies in a new way by bringing what they read about in their textbooks to life. Alright, and this is a great resource as well. This is Lesson Plans for Teachers. Um, I'm going to take us to this website. This is actually the official U.S. government website for GPS. Um, GPS is owned by the government. And here it's going to tell, you can go to, you can go to students. Um, it's going to tell you about GPS, GPS tutorials, who uses GPS. Um, and then right here is a great resource. It's lesson plans for teachers. Um, so it gives you a couple of links to different ideas for lesson plans. Um, this one is my favorite. So I know where you are is the title of this lesson plan. Um, it's for grades 9 through 12 in earth science or geography. It gives you a question and a learning objective. And then it gives you some resources. It lists the materials, keywords, gives all the good background information, learning procedures, and then even has the worksheet included with it down here at the bottom. So there's a worksheet. And then going back to the GPS website, there's also another useful little tool. You can go right up here um, and you can actually order a free copy of how GPS works, which is going to be like um, a poster for your classroom or you can download the PDF version of it.